lead comes in your business, right? You get a lead that comes in. House is worth 277. Seller owes 165. Now, they have an auction date that's 45 days out. We're going to hear this a lot. You're going to have a lot 45 days out, two weeks out, three weeks out. You're going to start when they, when they release the forbearances. You're going to, sellers are going to call now. Your phone's going to melt, especially if you have the marketing strategy that we're talking about and the position for it. They're going to call in now and they're going to say, hey, you know, I, I, you know, I have to get, I, I got auctions coming up in 30 days, coming up in 60 days. You're going to hear a lot of that. I mean, I, I started my entire business off of foreclosures. I built a 120 unit property portfolio in 2004, 2005, um, just strictly off foreclosure structuring deals on foreclosure, $36 million worth. So the auction days, 45 days out, back payments are 12,000. That means the payments, not, I mean, now you got attorney fees, you got interest on those back payments. So this property right here, this is a lead that comes in, you're talking to a seller, they got 45 days out, they have 12,000 back payments. Right? Equity $112,000. Now, you ask the seller, how much do you need to move? That's the question. Now, they can say $50,000, they can say $10,000. I have done more deals on properties in foreclosure where a seller goes, if you give me $5,000, I'm out of here. And you get, you can save my credit. If you give me $5,000, I'm done. So what's the offer? This is done on a on the uh, So offer seller five thousand net at close of escrow to move. Wrap the existing one hundred sixty five thousand dollar note. You can do it for five or more. If you're going to keep the property, you can definitely do it for longer, right? Or more. I put it on there. Agree to pay settlements of any back payments, liens, mortgage, late payments, and judgments. Why do we put that term on the indent? Huh? Yes, because here's the thing, is that if there's any junior liens behind the 165, for any, if there's one, if you have a $100,000 first and a $65,000 second and it's a pool lien or something like that, if you put this statement right here, you can agree to pay the settlements of any back payments and mortgages. Now you can reduce that $65,000 lien down to maybe three to $5,000. And now you get that property for $108,000, 100000 whatever it is. I've negotiated based upon this statement right here, $80,000 seconds down to $3,000. $56,000 seconds down to $10,000. Just because I put the statement. Now, on the purchase contract, is there any price? No. no. There's no price. There's no price. Because what they're going to do, they're going to say, it's going to say, see addendum. So it's 165 less the settlements, right? Or plus whatever the settlements are, and the 5K net, that becomes the price. Seriously. So it's an open ended price. Yeah, balloon payment, uh, balloon payment, uh, and, like at the end of five years, you cash them out. Like, you can. It depends on the situation. Like if, I, if I'm going to hold it and hang on to it, which I'm going to hold and hang on to, then I, I, you can could, you could do it to the term of the note. For an example, um, we have a property right now in South Bend. Right now we're working to be on South Bend, Indiana. It's about less than 10 minutes from uh, from uh, North Indiana University. Perfect low house, two bedroom. It's worth about 180. We're buying it for $62,000. You know what they owe? $62,000. So we're basically taking over the thing for the existing term, which is about 18 years left, um, for $62,000. What I'm going to do is turn around and sell it. For the prop price, right, and then just carry back a note on the property. But we're going to do it for the extended term. Some people will want a shorter term. It just depends on the situation. Right? You can do longer term, but if it is five years, then you will live it after five years. So, what's the total cash needed? Right, we got five thousand. We got twelve thousand. The cap. This is important because this is what is needed to get the deal done. You got five thousand. You got twelve thousand. Total cash needed. $17,000 cash needed. So you get $17,000 cash needed for the deal. Now, here's what I call the squeeze. So remember the property is worth 277, seller owes 65. So how do, what do we do? How do we make money on it? 
So we turn around and we market the property and sell the property for two hundred eighty thousand. Right, two hundred eighty thousand dollars with seller financing. Do you realize seller financing um, sells better than just cash deals? You can sell a deal with seller financing. So now you do a down payment from the buyer for fifty thousand. You create a new note, doable five years or whatever the term is. You match the term of the underlying note, a sixty-five thousand dollars seller carry for five years or longer to the term of the note, one hundred sixty-five thousand. So, what what does that mean for you? So essentially, you're going to arbitrage the down payments on a double escrow. So seventeen thousand needed cash to close. $50,000 from a down payment from the buyer, $33,000 cash now on the, on the down. So you get $33,000 cash to close. $65,000, now you created a note making 9% interest for five years or longer. So over five years, just on the interest is $29,250. Total profit on that one deal is $127,000. So what did you do? You created thirty-three thousand now, and you added uh, essentially sixty-five thousand dollars to your net worth in a, in a note that's paying you nine percent interest. I think it's like four hundred plus four hundred and thirty dollars a month on this deal, right? Versus just wholesaling the deal and walking away and making twenty-five to thirty thousand. You get both. So let's say. Now, I'm working with any speed, we're gonna to come to you guys, with the exact paperwork structure. The caveat is on this, because of the Dodd-Frank Act, you have to underwrite the seller with a loan officer, right? You underwrite the seller with a loan officer, which is completely fine, or underwrite the buyer with a loan officer. Um, and you have that on file per the Dodd-Frank. And now, you can turn around and sell it, and now you're doing what the seller carry, on that note, and you can close on the transaction. Now, you can either A, close on the transaction, own it, and then turn around and sell it, or you can do a double escrow on it, just like we're talking about here.